Hello friends! With the Tarkov Y being just around the corner with all the pre-wipe events, I wanted to make a video going over some tips that will help you get through your wipe very smooth and efficiently. So in this video I'll be going over server selection, dead-end task and multitasking, useful resources such as the uh, Tarkov Wiki and where you can find some really good maps, also uh, focusing on survival, and really the main reason why I wanted to make this video in the first case is to showcase a really OP route that you can literally do on your second raid of the wipe on Lighthouse. So yeah, let's hop right in. Every time Tarkov wipes, the queues can be extremely long with everyone queuing in, especially if you're selected on auto servers. I would recommend changing your servers whenever you launch the game. There's a change server tab. I would select everything that's under 100 ping. This is to try and avoid the 20 minute queues that come with wipe and also I would avoid scaving because I've had experiences of scaving and the queue times are like 30 minutes. Plus you can't really progress with your scav like you can with your PMCs. So I would avoid scaving for at least probably the first three-ish days. If you're trying to quest efficiently, you have to stay away from quests known as dead-end tasks. These quests lead to no new tasks after you complete them and can really slow down your progression overall. A prime example of this is Shootout Picnic, where you have to kill 15 scavs on woods and you get this quest to level 3. There's no point in going woods if you don't have other tasks to do there, especially when this leads to literally no other quests. This is where the importance of multitasking comes in, where you can complete multiple quests in a single raid. We can now kill Scavs on Woods for Shootout Picnic. We can do Search Mission for Prapor, where we check the USEC camp and the truck on the road. And two Jaeger quests, where we kill Scavs without body armor. And another one where we plant water bottles and lunchboxes at the bunkers. So in this single raid, we completed three tasks and we got progress on our other one. Something that can really slow down players or really help speed up your efficiency in questing is knowing what items to keep. I'm going to throw an image up on screen that will show you every single item you will need for questing. Even if you're not on that specific quest, you can hold on to these items and when you do unlock the quest, you can instantly turn in the item and just really help speed up your overall progression. Another insanely helpful website is the Tarkov Wiki. It contains all sorts of useful info from quests to keys to ammo pin and damage. Even with over 3,500 hours in Tarkov, I still find myself using this website all the time. For the last website I want to show is the Tarkov Map Genie. All the sort of spawns in the game, so I can toggle uh, stashes on, on customs, easily find them all right there click on it shows the image so you can easily find it if i wanted to look at armor spawns i could find them here and yeah um all the stuff will be in the description all the links for the stuff and hey good for the first week of wipe i tend to change my play style normally i'm just running at gunshots but i will not do that for probably about the first week just to try and go through my quests as fast as possible because I'm really focused on getting max traders so I can just mess around with the new guns and new content, new armor, that sort of thing. Just uh, avoid fights. There's no point in risking your flash drive that took you 10 raids to find over a stock M4 AK someone has and they're like level 1 with nothing really on them. For your first Tarkov raid, where should you go? A lot of people would go customs for their debut quest because it's your first Tarkov quest you get through prep or because you have to kill scavs on the map. But I would recommend against this. The queue times are normally super long and there's going to be literally everyone else going there just to kill scavs, just like you. This is where I'd normally suggest going interchange for the filing cabinets, tech loot, kill is there too, which if you bring a Mosin, you can hit them in anywhere but the face mask and you'll kill them. So you can start off your wipe in full killa and an RPK with good ammo, which would be crazy. But normally they lower his spawn rate down to some absurd number to where it's, he's super hard to find. And also hitting him in not the visor in the head is pretty difficult to do. 
with 12.12 .12, we got a new map called lighthouse and this is where you can get some crazy loot to really boost your start on the wipe you can get anywhere from scoped ak's with bp around that can pin through like almost anything m4s with attachments hex grids gen 4s meds nades even in their bags they can spawn flash drives which can be a pain to get first gear and you can get super quest locked behind this one if you don't get flash drives so apollo how do i go about doing this well what you want to do is go through an id like every single item you can until you hit level two you can also double left click on guns and inspect their components too and this will unlock the quest introduction you might have to restart your game because i've had that bug happen to where the quest won't pop up until i restart it but accept it Grab the note, you'll unlock Jaeger to where you can now buy the VPO. You can be grabbing the VPO, grab the VO MZ scope, and the 25mm ring scope mount. So grab two more mags. Uh, there's two ammos to choose between. You got the FMJ round and the EKO round. I think the EKO round is just better to the FMJ, so... Use that, use the EKO 30 bullets trick, and also grab a Barracoot bag. This is the loadout we're going to be using. I would recommend ensuring the gun and even the bag, because sometimes they can have a bigger bag. Uh, and you can just drop these, because you're probably going to get something better, and even if you die, no one's really going to take it. So here's the route I'm going to be using. There's two rogues up front we're going to kill. Make sure you're USAC or you uh, will not be able to get this close. Uh, sometimes this guy will run down off the gun, so you can just wait for him up front. Alright, here we're going to slow lean and shoot this one up here. He can still shoot you here, so be careful. Also, if this is your first time rogue farming, uh, I have a super in-depth video on it, so... It's another video you could check out, be very useful. While looting this guy right here, you want to have your back to not expose, so you want to try and put yourself up against the back corner of the tower. This is because the rogues that are in the middle of the water treatment plant can still shoot you while you're in this tower. Right here in this box can spawn anywhere from aces to bitcoins, so super good. That's like 300k we just got right there. There's a duffel bag, and here's a tech crate box, which you can use these items for upgrading your hideout. Another tech box here. So a rare item spawn right there. Another rare item spawn in a toolbox. Be careful while running here. You should be safe most of the time, but sometimes the rogues in the middle can shoot at you. But you're probably safe. And inside that building was a rare item spawn in the box we checked. Another rare item spawn. Get a Bitcoin here. Another rare item spawn. To kill that rogue there and then these rogues across from here can be very difficult to hit with a scope so yeah probably just ignore these inside here is a lot more tech loot in that corner there's like three different spawns also a trooper can spawn there here's some more tech loot all along this row up here another toolbox All right, here we want to slow lean and try and pick off these rogues. Like I said, these can be pretty difficult, so probably just skip them. Rare item spawn right here. the last rogue on the building finish that guy off now we're gonna peek warehouse 2 and try and get the two that we haven't killed up there and this run was done on a brand new account so we don't have any of our skills uh, during this run yeah 
Yeah, this guy had on a U-lock, so it's kind of impossible with this gun to kill a U-lock on first shot. So at this point in the run, you kind of have two options. You can either try and kill the four rogues at Warehouse 2 and the remaining stuff on the roof if you haven't killed it, or you can just extract a northern. If I had northern, I probably would have extracted here, but we didn't, so we continue on to try and pick off the remaining people at Warehouse 2. Be careful when you're around this corner, because rogues like to sit at that doorway, and if they are, they can potentially shoot you while you're running up to this truck. Right here, you can use grenades to try and bait them out, get them to move a little bit. Uh, also, don't be me and forget your bag, because I did that, and we literally lost everything in our bag this raid. <laughs> I forgot, I dropped it. Yeah, in these situations, stay calm. Remember, right hand peek is your friend, slow lean, and you will be able to finish off these rogues while they're running straight at you. So yeah, that is how you farm rogues as a level two. Uh, in here's some more tech loot, check around. Um, if you don't have Northern, Make sure you bring money to be able to extract at the car. It's 5k to exit, and if the car's not up, you can always extract a path to shoreline. And with all this loot we got, we will be able to probably get a scav junk box in little as a couple of raids, honestly. And that's actually just huge, because I know in other wipes it's a struggle to get the junk box. You kind of got to sell, like, guns and stuff you get, but... Honestly, a couple of raids, you'll have it. All right, friends, I think that wraps up everything. If I missed anything you'd like to know, drop a comment. Also, I'm live every day on Twitch. Come check me out. Link is in the description, and goodbye now. Just